Hello everyone, it's me Uncle John. Today I am going to read S6003 Water Wishes, Chapter 7 No Joe. Joe, Polly repeated, You know, Joe, my big brother. Heavens, I thought you outgrew your imaginary brother years ago, Polly. Oh, the adult, he just smiled. Polly felt her cheeks grow hot. She turned to Sam. The bottle, he mouthed at her. Polly's face went from red to white. Suddenly, the mother turned serious. She reached out and touched Polly's arm. Are you feeling all right? She asked. You haven't seemed yourself almost since we got here. Mm, mm, uh, no. Polly answered. I mean, yes, I mean, can I please be excused? Okay, Paul, said the mom. Why don't you go lie down? <clears throat> Maybe we should take a temperature. You look really dreadful. Me too, said Sam. I want to be excused, too. Sam and Polly got up shakily from the table and went downstairs. I know. We'll go check his, now, his room. I bet he's asleep. And they are playing a joke on us. Yeah, said Sam, hopefully. Polly and Sam crept into Joe's room. It was dark, but they could just make out a lamp in the bed. In, a lump in the bed. Impatiently, Polly switched on the light, but instead of Joe, a teenage girl squinted at them from the bed. Natalie, Polly's voice came out in a squeak. What are you doing here? Natalie was their favorite babysitter, but she hadn't sat for them since Joe turned 13. What are you talking about? Natalie mumbled sleepily. I drove up here with you guys to help your folks and Sarah and Ned. She rubbed her eyes. What kind of game are you playing? Nothing. No game, no game, repeated Polly, backing up and turning off the light. Sorry, their mom came down the stairs. What are you two whispering about, she asked, and what are you doing out of bed? I feel better, me too. Well, okay, but maybe you should stay inside until lunch. It's looking a little stormy out. Why don't you get a game from upstairs? <clears throat> we will. I just have to find something. Me too, says Sam. Sam and Polly headed back into their room. They shut the door and looked at each other. What's happening? Polly asked Sam. Sam shrugged miserably. I don't know. Shh. Polly hissed, her, her face still pale. I'm thinking Polly went to the closet where she stashed the bottle and pulled it out. She lifted it up and they both stared at it. He's really gone, said Polly. Totally. I told you something was wrong. We have to help him. Polly glared at him. When you turned into a mermaid, uh, you wanted to be in the ocean really badly, Sam said, remember? Of course I remember, said Polly. So, <clears throat> maybe it has something to, to do with that. Joe did get in the ocean, he must have, and now it won't let him go. And we're the only ones who even remember him, so we have to do something. He looked sideways at Polly to see if she agreed. He thought it would be great to save someone, even Joe, even though he had stolen a wish. You're wrong, Polly said. She had just remembered something. You don't have to do anything. My wish only lasted until the next morning. I bet tomorrow evening we'll be back to normal and Joe will be here complaining more than ever. We'll only have one wish left. Sam breathed a sigh of relief. Yeah, I bet that's what will happen. He was disappointed that Joe didn't need him after all, but he wasn't sure he could have convinced Polly to be part of the rescue operation. The rest of the morning, they stayed inside and watched as the sunlight dwindled away behind dark clouds. Uncle Ned had reported that the weather guys on TV were in an uproar. The weather was going haywire. They said the winds and the tides were completely unpredictable. By the afternoon, the world was gray. Gray sky, tall gray waves. Even the sand was gray. Sam and Polly walked around the walked around on their deck, the cold wind whipping their hair into their eyes. Ruffled, Sam, Sam couldn't help, still feeling worried. Polly couldn't help, still feeling a little mad. They all went out to a restaurant for dinner, which was a special treat, but Polly and Sam didn't feel very hungry. Natalie and the father both joked a lot, joked a lot, but it didn't raise their spirit. Uncle Ned didn't stop talking about the weather was convinced they, they would need to be evacuated before the end of the vacation. As they drove back to the beach house, 
the rain had begun to fall. When they turned on the car radio, they heard the news that a hurricane warning had gone into effect at night. As Sam and Polly fell asleep, it was again to the sound of raindrops at the end. In chapter 8, <clears throat> Hurricane came. The next morning, Polly and Sam woke up with a feeling of expectation. They bounded into Joe's room and pounced on the figure under the cover. Polly had her mouth open, ready to yell at Joe, and a very grouch Natalie emerged. You've gone off the deep end, she crumbled at them. Go back to bed, it's too dark to get up. She was right. It was very dark. Sam and Polly soon found out why. The hurricane had arrived and its name was Kane. Kane battered the beach house from all sides. The TV weatherman kept saying how unusual it was to have a hurricane in June. Sam and Polly talked about what to do about Joe. Sam thought Polly wasn't worried enough. There's nothing we can do, Polly said. No son, no wish, no Joe. Despite the lack of Joe, there was something thrilling about the hurricane. They stood at the window and watched as the rain seemed to blow in all directions at once. Sam even thought he saw it raining upward one time. Finally, Polly got bored and went off to read her book. Sam kept watching. The wind whistled and whipped at the windows. The waves washed up to lap at the stills beneath the house. Sam thought that if Joe were there, he would make up a story about how he had created the storm with his powers over the weather. He hoped Joe was okay. Wherever he was, Cain raged all through that Thursday and into Friday. Sam tossed and turned all night, dreaming about being caught under the waves. Polly dreamed about being a mermaid again on Friday morning. Sam and Polly were both feeling out of sorts. When they woke up, Sam was sleepy and Polly was mad all over again about not getting to swim in the ocean. Sam told Polly about his drowning dream. She wouldn't listen to anything bad about the weather, water. After breakfast, Sam tried to get Polly to talk about what they were going to do about getting Joe. Polly turned on him. There's nothing we can do. <clears throat> we have to wait for the storm to go. And then we'll talk about it, okay? Now leave me alone. Sam didn't say another word to Polly. He went to find his plastic knight. He stacked, he staged elaborate rescue scenes all over the downstairs hall until little at nearly eight a night. By the afternoon, the excitement of the storm had completely worn off for the whole family. I guess we should consider ourselves lucky not to be evacuated, said mom. I don't know if lucky is the right word, said uncle Ned. Remember, we did have four nice days and, and Sarah said cheerfully, as little Ed howled. Two and a half, grumbled Dad. We got here halfway through Saturday. Then there was a weird storm in the afternoon on Monday. Then Tuesday was cold and windy. Wednesday, the rain began. Thursday and Friday, hurricane. Isn't that two and a half days? It's all about whether the glass of life is half full or half empty. It chirped Aunt Sarah. We must all try and set a good example for the kids. Oh, leave him alone, Sarah, laughed Mom. That looked at Aunt Sarah without saying anything. Without saying anything, Polly had been watching the conversation. Dad's expression looked very familiar to her. It made her think of Sam. Polly got up from the couch and went to look out the window. She knew she hadn't been nice to Sam. It was just that he kept bugging. It was just that uh, he kept bugging her about Joe, and Polly didn't think it was that bad. Without him, or was it? Polly sighed. She went to find Sam. He was in their room, lying on his bed, staring out the window. He scrambled up, and Polly came in. He brushed his cheeks with his hand. Are you crying, she asked. No, said Sam. Sure, said Polly. Sam's eyes are filled with tears. You're never going to be able to get him. You don't even know where he is, or anything. Polly stared at him. I don't know, she said. Is it really so bad without him? Think about it, Sam. Isn't it great to not have anyone telling you what to do? Sam looked at Polly in horror. How can you say that? And it's not true anyway. It's not. You just like it because now you get to be the boss. Sam's face had turned bright red. 
No one tells you what to do. You're being the same as him, anyway. Tears had spilled over at the same spot, but he didn't brush them away. And you said that you didn't want to be that way. You just said it, that you didn't want to grow up, and you don't even act like you care. You're going to grow up and be mean and horrible, said lay back on the bed and put his pillow over his head. Polly was shocked by Sam's outburst. Sam hardly ever got mad. At first, she wanted to get mad back, but something in Sam's wavering voice made her listen, and even though she wanted to tell Sam that he was totally wrong, she knew that he was at least a little right. It didn't make her happy, she said and looked at Sam. Then she put her hand gently on his shoulder. Sam, she said quite quietly. He didn't say anything. She shook his shoulder. Sam, I'm sorry. Still not a word. Sam, you're right. I was being a jerk, then she added. I'm not going to say it again, so you better forgive me right now. Sam took the pillow off his face. His face was still red. He looked at Polly suspiciously. We are going to go rescue Joe, aren't we? Polly sighed. Yeah, I guess we have to. Sam smiled. He wiped his nose with his hand. So what are we going to do? He asked. He couldn't think anymore. All his energy had been used up in getting mad. Oh, we have to make some real plans, said Polly. We should have started right away. I guess I just couldn't believe that he wouldn't show up again, and I kind of liked being the oldest. Yuck. Yeah, I know you did. It was yuckiest for me. Polly started to pace. Think, Sam. Think about what Joe could have wished for. Something about water, she muttered. Water, water, water. Dolphins, mermaids, sharks, tira, treasure, the titanic. Octopuses squeezed desert island. She stopped. Sam, help me. Don't just stand there. Think of something. Okay, okay. Don't get mad at me, too. I won't. Just help me. Sam squinched his face up in thought. He, he want, he'd be captain of something, someone in charge, someone old, like 30 years, maybe something from his comic. His comics. That's a great idea, but where would they be? Sam had no idea. He watched Polly, but now he lived as she, as she thought. There's only one thing I can think of, said Polly. Let's hope there is a clue. Polly went to the closet and pulled out the bottle. It was foggy inside. Polly pulled the parchment out of the neck of the bottle and uh, un unrolled it. Inside the parchment was another piece of paper. It was the cover of one of Joe's comic books. On it was a picture of a fierce looking man with a wild green beard and fish's tail. He was holding something that looked like a huge fork. And on either side of him was a shark. Beyond him loomed a scaly green sea serpent with giant fangs in watery tie for the words Neptune's revenge. That's it, said Sam. That's Joe's wish. Polly nodded. You have to be right. I wonder why he didn't come back after a day, though. Sam sure. Hello. Maybe he never sleeps, so the magic doesn't know it's been night. Maybe he's a big trouble somewhere, said Polly. Or maybe if you're in the water, when your wish happens, it's still... It'll stick. We could just wish to be wherever he is, suggested Sam. I guess so, said Polly doubtfully. It might work. Let's try, said Sam. They looked out the window at the drizzle. Polly shrugged. Uh, it's not that bad outside. We better do it now before it gets worse. What are we going to tell Mom and Dad, said Sam. Polly thought for a moment. Lying was never a good thing. Finally, she made a choice. This is an emergency, she said. Right, Sam? Sam nodded. A terrible emergency. Okay, said Polly. We have to take matters into our own hands. I'm going to tell them that we are playing a game, like hide and seek, so that if they don't see us around, that's why. That's good, said Sam. You go tell them. Sam was peering into the bottle when Polly ran back in a moment later. It's fine, she panted. We'll have to sneak out carefully. I'm good at sneaking, said Sam. Let's go. Wait, said Polly. You know what we need, Sam? Sam shook his head. We need disguises, said Polly. Yeah, said Sam. Sam put on his bathing suit, then he found Uncle Ned's old straw hat. Then he put on one of Dad's t-shirts, which hung to his knees. Uh, Polly put on her bathing suit and her favorite t-shirt, which said, Life is a beach. Over there, she tied her towel around her waist and put out, put one over her shoulder like a cape. Another towel was draped over, over her head. You need a cape, she told Sam. She tied her towel around Sam's neck. Then she dug into a bag of things she had found along the beach. There was a bunch of seagull feathers. She stuck them into the band around Sam's head. I guess that'll do, she said. Let's go. Sam carried the bottle as they went outside. The wind blew furiously. The sand was wet 
It would, do, it would have stung, grand white clouds boiled overhead, moving in an all direction at once, as if giant hands were stirring them. The party, patches of blue showed through here and there, uh, while the light mist of rain and ocean spray filled the air. Polly clutched the towel to her head. Sam held on to the straw hat. The wind had blown all the feathers out of his head by the time they climbed over the dune. Look, said Polly. Suddenly, Sam looked. On the beach was an old man dressed in tattered blue and green. He danced at the edge of the water, waving his arms and singing. Waves crashed before him, and he danced away from the foam like a kid. Weird, said Polly. They headed in a diagonal way, diagonal away from the strange man. The mist seemed to gather around them like dust until they could barely see in front of them. They reached the edge of the ocean and looked up at the sky, searching for a patch of blue or a scrap of sunlight. But everything was just shades of gray. Polly's hand, Sam's eyes stung from the salt water. Sam fell weighed down by his damp towel cape. Polly was beginning to feel as if she was wrapped in a giant wet rug. The wind got louder. Let's go back in. Polly shouted to Sam, her voice blew back at her. Sam didn't want to give up. He also did not want to be alone in the clinging mist. They turned back toward the beach house. They could only just see the outline of it. A figure came dancing toward them. Then there was the sound of roaring water. Run, said Polly. He turned back to see the wave. The crest curled, curled like fingers above his head. Then the edges sparkled with sunlight. Sam raised the bottle. It glowed magn magical green as the single beam of light cut it. We wish to go to where Joe is, Sam shouted, then the fingers of the wave closed over him. The end.